Excellency Ranil Wickramasinghe, Mr. R. Sampathan, Leader of the Opposition, Mrs. Sushma Swaraj, External Affairs Minister, Dr. Vivian Balakrishnan, Minister for Foreign Affairs, Mr. Tilak Marapana, Distinguished Ministers, Mr. Ram Mathav, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. It is indeed a real pleasure for me to be here in this fascinating city of Colombo at the occasion of the second Indian Ocean Region Conference. Please allow me, first of all, to extend my sincere gratitude to the government of the Democratic Socialist Republic of Sri Lanka, as well as the India Foundation and the partners for the cordial invitation, warm welcome, and impeccable hospitality extended to me and my delegations since our arrival here yesterday. Ladies and gentlemen, as development partners with vested interest in the, Indi in the Indian Ocean, this conference presents us the opportunity to come together to discuss and make recommendations on issues which have a significant impact on our livelihoods and existence. This ocean of ours, the world's third largest body of water, is endowed with a natural abundance of resources and is the bridge connecting the East and the West. It is also one of the world's busiest waterways channeling almost half of the international maritime trade. And it has gained tremendous importance over the years as a major geopolitical hotspot. While the region is home to a third of the world's population and continues to take shape as an economic powerhouse, we bear in mind that we are not immune to the host of challenges that constantly loom over our ocean. Our focus must therefore be squarely placed on forging the kind of effective partnership which would allow us to capitalize on the opportunities offered by our precious maritime heritage. Coming from a small island developing state with an exclusive economic zone spanning some 1.4 million square kilometers of ocean, I am acutely aware of the pressing necessity to safeguard our ocean and its inherent and pristine resources. In this context, and on behalf of the government and the people of Seychelles, I would like to express my unequivocal support to the choice of the conference theme, a vision for peace, progress, and prosperity. The first component is peace. Peace is an aspiration that the peoples of the Indian Ocean region hold dear, and we are conscious of the insidious forces at play which, if allowed to go unchecked, could be detriment to peace to this part of the world. Needless to mention the tension in the Middle East and on the Korean Peninsula that have attracted international attention lately is a menace to peace and stability. Ladies and gentlemen, conflict in our region and in any other part of the world for that matter would be damaging for the economic well-being of our peoples. And with the risk of wiping out the economic and social gains achieved over long decades of investment and hard work. For small island economies such as the Seychelles, the repercussions of prolonged hostilities within our midst could be devastating. Our governments, multilateral organizations, and regional institutions are duty-bound to be vigilant and pay attention to these matters. They also have to deal with factors that contribute to escalate and, and spread territorial disputes 
and other forces of instability, which may surface every now and again with the potential threat to peace and stability. As a representative of a country which has been plagued by the scourge of piracy over a number of years, I can bear testimony to the fact that the sharing of information coupled with the mobilization of stakeholder organizations and like-minded partners is the only way forward in dealing with trans-border crimes which, which threaten our peaceful existence. It is a formula that works that produces results, and similar approaches are being called for in addressing terrorism, illegal fishing, drug trafficking, trafficking in persons, and other forms of organized crime that are injurious to civilization. We believe that peace is an inalienable right that we all need to cherish and preserve in order that our peoples continue to enjoy the riches of our oceanic space without disruption. The developmental potential of our vast ocean space and its underlying maritime resources signify real avenues for progress, the second component of the theme. Today in Seychelles, we have a clear strategy of how we want to sustainably manage our ocean through the implementation of the Blue Economy Roadmap we look at the blue economy as the beacon that will drive us towards peace and prosperity. The pursuit of our blue economy agenda will not only lead us towards the realization of United Nations Sustainable Development Goal 14, but also to wealth creation through innovation and value addition. Together with other small island developing states, we have pioneered this concept as a mechanism for sustainable development of our ocean-based economies. We are well aware that the future depends largely on our ability to tap into this potential wisely, smartly, and sustainably. This is why in formulating the Seychelles Blue Economy Program, we have taken precaution to lay emphasis on four of its main pillars. Firstly, about safety and security. Secondly, about economic diversification and the creation of high-value jobs. Thirdly, about food security. And last, and certainly not least, the sustainable management of our marine environment. This so, in order to ensure that development remains focused, inclusive, and relevant to our population. Ladies and gentlemen, Progress is also achieved through the bridges that we build with our neighbors, fostering collaboration in strategic areas of mutual interest can lead to the fulfillment of our development goals. A notable example of such cooperation is the development and joint management by Mauritius and Seychelles of an area of around 400,000 square kilometers of the extended continental shelf of the Mascarin Plateau. As nations of the Indian Ocean region, it is important that we continue to work towards strengthening our partnership through dialogue in the spirit of friendship, respect, and mutual understanding. The third component of the theme, ladies and gentlemen, with peace and progress as part of the equation Prosperity for our people will always be the end result. The peoples of our countries should always remain the primary beneficiaries of our decisions and actions at the local, regional, and international level. Prosperity should not remain confined within the boundaries of our respective countries, but should spread throughout the region. This can be achieved through the sharing of knowledge and good practices. And remember that poverty somewhere is a threat to security and prosperity everywhere. In this spirit, I wish to share with you that Seychelles has adopted a unique approach in managing the development of our maritime space. Our objective is to change the business models and to streamline the principles of sustainability, resilience, 
equity and innovation in our maritime sectors. In the pursuit of this endeavor, we have taken on board two innovative finance projects. The first, a debt swap to develop a marine special plan of our exclusive economic zone and to designate 30% of it as protected areas. The second project is to issue a blue bond aimed at supporting the transition to sustainable artisanal fisheries in Seychelles. I'm proud to announce that the realization of both of these projects are well on the way. They could not have been imp implemented without the support of our friends and international partners who continue to advocate on our behalf. I'm heartened to see that as countries of the Indian Ocean region, we have realized the importance of our ocean and the unique link with its peoples. We do realize that development, that our development, is an epic journey calling for everyone to be on board, especially our youth who must be in the front seat for they are not only the leaders of tomorrow, but that of today. They need to be empowered and equipped with the right tools and know-how to be able to become the real guardians of the peace, progress, and prosperity that we are building today. I take this opportunity to make a special call to everyone present to keep in mind the special characteristics of our region as we deliberate during the course of this conference. We are fully, fully aware of our shared challenges and we have shown the willingness to come together to find solutions. This is truly exemplary. The government and the people of Seychelles will continue to support the spirit of such initiatives as this conference. And I would like to wish you all the very best in your deliberations. Our shared contributions will serve to improve the lives of the people in this part of the world which we love so dearly. I thank you for your attention.